Mahabharat, Chapter 26, Part 4 Loma Shirishi Answers Yudhisthira's Questions Just after Narada departed, Loma Shirishi arrived. The sage was radiant in his black deerskin, and he carried only a water pot. Receiving him with honor, the Pandavas sat around him and asked, to tell of his travels. Loma Sharisi replied, O heroes, while journeying throughout the worlds, I went to Amaravati, Indra's great city. There I saw the exalted king of the celestials, but to my astonishment I also saw your brother Arjuna sharing Indra's throne. Lord Indra asked me to come to you and assure you of Arjuna's welfare. Thus I have come with all speed. Lomasha told the Pandavas how Arjuna had acquired the celestial weapons, including Lord Shiva's famous weapon. Arjuna had also learned to sing and dance from the Gandharvas. Arjuna would be soon returning. Your brother asked me to lead you to the Tirthas so that you may gain pious merits. Lord Indra also made this request and it is my desire as well. Although I have already been to all the Tirthas twice, I shall go for yet a third time with you. Yudhisthira and his brothers were overjoyed to hear of Arjuna's success. Yudhisthira then said, O oh, exalted Brahman, your words are like a shower of nectar. Who could be more fortunate than one who is remembered by the king of the celestials, Indradev? Having you now as our guide, our fortune is complete. Be pleased, O Rishi, to show us all the holy places. Yudhisthira then addressed the Brahmins who were staying with them. O best of men, let those mendicants, Brahmins and yogis, who are incapable of bearing hunger, thirst, and the fatigue of travel, as well as severe climate, let them abstain from following me. Yudhisthira knew that the journey to the Tirthas would be difficult. He did not want to expose the Brahmins to any unnecessary suffering. He continued to speak. All those desiring regular meals and living upon cooked food should therefore stay back. You may now go to King Dhritarashtra for your maintenance. The king of the Panchalas will also provide for you. With your permission, we shall now depart. Sorrowfully, a large number of Brahmanas took their leave and traveled toward Hastinapur. Only a few hundred ascetic Brahmins remained. They traveled with Lomasha, Dhomya, and the Pandavas. They chose a day to begin their pilgrimage, which was marked by favorable constellations. Then, before leaving, the brothers put on armor over their deerskin and bark garments. They took up their weapons with the expectation of meeting Rakshasas. As they began their journey, Yudhisthira said to Lomasha Rishi, O foremost of celestial Rishis, I do not think that I am without religious merit, but still I am afflicted with sorrow. On the other hand, I see that my enemies lack all merit and yet still prosper. How can such apparent contradictions exist? Loma Sharishi replied, O son of Kunti, 
You should never grieve for such things. A man may be seen to prosper in sin. A man may obtain good fruits or vanquish his enemies, but he is finally destroyed to the root. I have seen many Daityas and Dhanavas prosper by sinful activities, but I have also seen them overtaken by utter destruction. O ruler of the earth, I saw all of this, especially in the Satya Yuga, the Golden Age. Lomasha Rishi narrated how during Satya Yuga, the first in the cycle of ages, the Asuras pridefully refused to perform religious acts, while the Devas practiced virtue and engaged in sacrifice. At first, the Asuras seeking only wealth became powerful and wealthy, but it did not last. From the possession of ill-gotten wealth, there arose every kind of evil propensity, and from that arose shamelessness, said Lomasha. All good behavior disappeared, and for want of good conduct and virtue, the demons could no longer express forgiveness or morality. They lost their prosperity because the goddess of fortune Lakshmi left the Asuras and sought out the Celestials, while the goddess of adversity, O Lakshmi, sought out the demons. When afflicted by adversity, the Asuras became angry and possessed by Kali, the personality of quarrel and destruction. That personality influenced them towards more and more sin, destitute of all sacrifice and religious ritual, the demons soon met complete ruin. Lomasha continued, On the other hand, the virtuous devas visited holy places and engaged in sacrifice, charity, and asceticism. Thus the prosperity they attained was lasting. Therefore, O best of men, you too will gain good fortune. You will gain it by visiting the Tirthas and by your ascetic life in the forest. Dhritarashtra's sons, addicted to sin, will certainly be destroyed, just as the Asuras were destroyed.